Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, November 11th, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, it's Microsoft's Patch Tuesday, so let's start with that. We received a total of 110 or 112 patches, depending on how you exactly count them, with 17 of them being rated as critical. And then there is one that was previously disclosed. That's the one that we talked about, I believe it was last week, the one privilege escalation vulnerability that uh, Google has uh, disclosed and made public. And Google already had seen this being exploited in the wild. Overall, this I think isn't actually the most important vulnerability here. We uh, do have, for example, CVE 2020-17051. That's a vulnerability in the Windows network file system and it can be exploited remotely, doesn't require any authentication and has a CVSS score of 9.8. Microsoft also rates exploitation of this vulnerability as more likely. And well, it wouldn't be Patch Tuesday without a new Microsoft SharePoint vulnerability. I think that's always something uh, to look for. So uh, CVE 2020-17061. Now this one also makes it too important uh, with a Microsoft scale uh, with a CVSS score of 8.8. Sort of interesting also a number of critical vulnerability in the HEIF image extension and the HEVC video extension. These formats may not be as much household names as JPEG and GIF, uh, but uh, they are the default file formats in iOS 11 and later. And so you'll definitely see them from mobile devices and Macs. Windows 10 started to support these file formats with the October 2018 update. And with your Windows update, you may also receive a new microcode from Intel for its CPUs fixing yet another side channel attack. These side channel attacks just don't seem to be going away. And interesting feature that's being abused here, the running average power limit or Rappel feature in some of these CPUs, which is really intended to sort of limit the power consumed by a particular CPU, for example, in data centers and the like, where you would otherwise overheat systems. The problem with the feature is that it does allow the measuring of power consumption at a very high accuracy and frequency, which wasn't thought to be sufficient to deduct anything about the operations performed by the CPU. But researchers now have proven that they're able, for example, to extract RSA keys or learn about operations and data stored within the trusted computing parts of the CPU like SGX. Like for many of these vulnerabilities, uh, exploitation has been proven in labs, a little bit questionable how well this will work on an actual system. And yes, we got updates from Adobe, but nothing really too exciting. Uh, both vulnerabilities are only rated as important, one for Adobe Connect and one for Adobe Reader for Android. You may have also seen again today uh, the pop-up asking you to simply uninstall Flash. Well, uh, do it unless you have a real good reason not to uninstall Flash. And if you haven't seen the pop-up, well, uh, double check if you have it installed and just get rid of it. Now, Firefox also released a new version today, fixing a critical vulnerability that could allow for code execution. Uh, this is, well, uh, one of these typical use after free vulnerabilities. Thunderbird, if anybody is using that, uh, may be affected by this problem as well. 
To make up for all of these important but kind of boring vulnerabilities and patches, I have a pointer to one more paper here, and that's by three researchers from Harbin Engineering University in Harbin, China. They analyzed ADSB signals emitted by aircraft in more detail. Uh, these signals usually identify the aircraft. The aircraft is essentially sending an identifying code so it can be tracked as it is uh, traversing different airspaces. Well, uh, sometimes uh, owners of aircrafts may want to obscure uh, their identity, in particular, if you're talking about heads of state and military aircraft and the like that don't want to be tracked instead of turning off the signal which is usually not legal and also dangerous uh, they could just emit a different code this paper looked into fingerprints of uh, different ADS-B transmitters and found that they're unique enough where it's possible to identify an aircraft even if it does send the wrong code. So just by looking at small shifts and such in the frequency. Of course, uh, this would require special equipment. This is not necessarily easily picked up just with a standard ADSB receiver. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.